This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're very fortunate tonight to have as our guest one of the most accomplished judges in the state, but also one of the prettiest in the state. Y'all enjoy seeing Mary Wyndham, who's on the Court of Criminal Appeals and an outstanding jurist in the state, and uh, we thank her for taking time to be with us today. Mary, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Mary, we were talking before the show about one of my favorite guys on the court. I, I'm really close to you and Beth Kellum and Chris McCool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of the best people in the state on the Court of Criminal Appeals. Now, who are the other two? Richard Minor. Oh, yeah. You probably know Richard uh -huh. Minor. He was the DA up in St. Clair County. That's right. He's and new, isn't he? He's new. He uh -huh. came on about the same time as Chris. Right. And then Bill Cole, who was on oh, the bench yeah. in Jefferson County. That's right. They came on together. Mary, let's begin. Now, where, where is your hometown? Baymanette, Alabama. You're from Baymanette? Down in Baldwin County. Do you know Ricky Rose and Alpha Turner Brothers? Ah. And you, Dodie? Yes, of yeah. course. I know them very well. You Great know, family. Ricky gave me, we were in the same fraternity in Alabama. He gave me, he was mayor of Baymanette. He sure and Robert were, were, we were in school together. And, you know, we were so raucous in college in Alabama that they gave us all nicknames. And and Ricky was uh, was a, was our pledged person. And he says, he gave everybody a nickname, you know, like on Animal House, you get the nickname of Otter and all that stuff. And oh, Ricky, <laughs> he said he's tall and named Flowers, we call him Tree. Ah, You've heard people call me Tree before. I have heard and that so, before. Uh, Ricky Rhodes gave me the nickname. Well, he's a fine man, as is Dodie. I love that family. I, I love old John McMillan. Oh. Now, he's been on the show a lot of times. He's a great guy. He, he and my brother fun. were best friends were in they? high school, yes. Do you know, uh, Mary, people don't know this about Baldwin County, but it was, when I was growing up, it was, it was known as potato growing capital of the, of the South. Wouldn't doubt it. Did you not know that? I'm not surprised. There's a lot of farming that goes on uh -huh. in Baldwin County still, even with all the development. And uh, Mac Millen's family settled there long way before the county was, was even part of the state. Talking about another really fine family, and that's uh -huh. the McMillan family. They came up from Stoddard. Over the northern part of that, Baldwin County. Do you know, Mary, now Baldwin County, you, this will help you, probably always helps you. You know, Baldwin County is so Republican and so populous now that it has, it's one of the five most populous Republican counties in the state. Is that? I Baldwin. don't doubt that. You ought to put good, that on your resume that you're from Baldwin. You good always conservative do, folks. Absolutely, I do. I'm proud of it. So you grew up in Baylonette, and then where did you go to college? University of South Alabama. I graduated from the University of South Alabama there in Mobile. And then you went on law school after that? Well, after college. You I taught or something, didn't you? Chamber of Commerce. Okay. I worked for the Baymanette Chamber of Commerce and then the Mobile Chamber of Commerce. So came back from going to South Alabama, came back home to Baymanette. Well, Baymanette, and then I'm, that's right, and then I moved to Mobile uh -huh. to work for the chamber there. And uh, then I had an opportunity after a while. I, Married, happened to marry Steve Wyndham, another Steve. That's right. We went with college together, you know. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh -huh. And the Senate together. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had the opportunity to pursue my dream of going to law school. So I commuted to Jones Law School, Faulkner University's Jones School right. of Law. Uh -huh. mm, sure did. Now, you and Steve were already married, though. That's correct. Uh -huh. he, in fact, he and Kylie encouraged me. I'm, I, that's when I met you the first time. When Steve was in the Senate. That's right. Uh -huh. And Wendell Mitchell, Senator Wendell That's Mitchell. That's right. They were good friends, weren't they? They were, uh -huh. and he was the dean of the law school. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, did you, did you practice criminal law before you uh, got on the bench? Well, when I went out of, uh, got out of Jones, I was in private practice. So I practiced Here in Montgomery. In Mobile. 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 Steve and I were living in Mobile. Now he had a, he had a, he had a, we all in practice together? We were not. In we, separate law firms? We were, uh -huh. yeah, I, I was just a solo practitioner. Uh -huh. So I did a variety of work as a solo practitioner, but uh, the majority of my uh, practice was in probate law. Uh -huh. In fact, I passed that on to Justice Mike Bolin, who was the probate judge in Jefferson right, County, right. that I had been, uh, enjoyed my probate law practice. Now what, uh, what year did you get elected to the Court of Criminal Appeals? 2008. All right, so you've been on there for for 13 years. Yeah, my, in my 13th year, I sure so, am. I tell it's a six-year term. Sure is. The first time you ran in 08, 
who ran against you? Who, who did? You, who was in that race? I was had, it an open seat? It was an open seat. Uh, Judge Pam Bishop had been in that That's seat. That's right, and she uh -huh. retired. And Wasn't so she from down there too? Sh she was a judge down there. She uh -huh. sure was in Baldwin County for yeah. several years. Sure was. Uh -huh. And I'd known her, um, and uh, so I had two opponents in the primary. Uh, Chris Mixon, a young lawyer from Birmingham, and then Duncan Crow, a lawyer with the Revenue Department uh -huh. uh, from Mobile area. Did you beat him without a runoff? Sure did. You I won without a runoff your first race. I, I was blessed. Uh -huh. I was blessed. And then I had a, a defense lawyer, lawyer, Amy Cobb Smith, who was the Democrat opponent in okay. the general election. No, and then uh, did you have an opponent in fourteen? No, I was the best way, to, best way to run, isn't it? It sure is. I was blessed not to have an opponent. I only had an opponent one time when I ran for the legislature five times. I don't doubt that. Mary, the, you remember us seeing each other over at Opelika that night? You, you've been campaigning for, you, you would do a good job campaigning. Well, thank you. Remember that night we had over there for that, uh, last year you were running for re-election? Sure did enough. Did you have an opponent? I did. I had an opponent. I forgot. I, I said you were going to win, but I didn't. I didn't know it was, you were win because you wasn't didn't have an opponent because you were so popular. Well, thank you, thank you. I did. Then we sat together at that thing in Open Opelika. We sure did. Stephen, you and I sat together. And you were the you speaker. were the main speaker. Uh huh. Did a great job, by the way. Steve. That was a good program, wasn't it? It was a good program. Nice a, folks. They got a good Republican Party over there in Lee County. They really do. They got uh -huh. some good folks over there. Now, uh, Mary, so you've been on the bench thirteen years. So you you got you can run for the state supreme court. You ought to, the, the rumor is you're gonna run. And you're gonna win. Well, this this coming year in 2022. Well, thank you, sir. I am running. Lord's willing, I'll win. I'm gonna work for it. You will. I can tell you that much. <laughs> now you may not work as hard as old Baku at work. <laughs> that guy works so hard. He sure does. He's but a great you do guy. Too. You do too. He's a great guy. Uh, let me ask you this: you're t you're running for the seat that Mike Bolin, who you referred to is leaving. He's been on the show with me before. He, like you said, is a very popular probate judge of Jefferson County and went on the bench kind of late, really. Uh, I don't know. He, he's just his second term. He's finishing up, I think. Uh, I think he's been on longer three, than that. I that think long. so, but regardless, yeah. he's been on there a while and done a great job. Mary, tell our viewers, if you will, because they don't know the, how the Court of Criminal Appeals and how the Court of Civil Appeals works and everything. Take them through a case Let's just say there's a high-profile murder case coming out of Baldwin County, uh, and, and tell them that they go. What they go to the regular circuit court, and then tell them how it appeals, and the, like explain if you would the five members of the Court of Civil Appeals, the five members of the Court of Criminal Appeals. We've touched on those, and then the nine members of the State Supreme Court, uh, and how that would work. Let's say that. There's a murder trial in in um, in Bay Manette. and um, first t tell them how, it how everything works. The DA brings the case and all that sort of thing. Right, right, and it's it's tried before a jury. The jury renders their verdict, and if the defendant is found guilty, that or he or she has the opportunity or has the right to appeal the case to our court. And they, a so, lot of times they do, don't they? they? A lot of times they do. Our court hears every single appeal out of all over the state of Alabama, every single county, all 67. Anyone that appeals a criminal case, it comes to our court. So we have a very busy court. Y'all do, don't you? We sure do. Because, you know, a lot of people get, they get convicted and they now have these law libraries and everything, and they these these guys are in or women in prison. They sit around and write briefs to y'all all day long, don't they? They certainly have that right and that opportunity. They sure do. And what we, what our uh, job is to do is to review what happened in the lower court, right? To view, and we look at the issues that they present to us, and we say see whether or not there were any errors made in the lower court. That's courts. the main thing, isn't it? That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Like we don't see juries, we don't see that trial judge. We you. You don't see the defendant. Our job is to read the record, look at what happened down below, and decide whether the case went the way it should have been according to our statutes. Now, let's say that uh, y'all will look for an error by the trial judge if they didn't give the right instructions or something like that's that. An, that's certainly an example uh -huh. of what issues are presented to us. Or maybe the person ain't got right representation or something that's like that. That's another issue that uh -huh. we see often that they claim that they didn't get ad adequate representation. Because a lot of them have been given pro bono uh, 
lawyers. That, 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 that's that, right. Uh -huh. They court appointed lawyers if they can't afford if it's proven that they can't afford one. Uh huh. Now let me ask you this: How many cases will come up there on appeal in the, in the criminal court appeals? How many? Sometimes y'all y'all don't actually hear oral arguments a lot of times, do you? Well, we do. We do have oral arguments. Uh -huh. That's when people ask what kind of court we have. That's the kind of court we have. So. That's when the appellant, who was the defendant, now when they get to us, they're the appellant, they have a right to have their lawyer come before us. And then the Attorney General's office, as a rule, sends one of their lawyers over to represent the state. And they have an opportunity in a structured amount of time to present to us their sides of the story based on what issues we ask them to provide us more information on. Well now, if, if y'all, well y'all like, study the case and if you do you, like the Supreme Court you sometimes don't even grant oral arguments or do you? We don't do have to, that's yeah. right we have, now I'll tell you we make a point to always grant oral arguments on death penalty cases right? So there. So every are, death penalty y'all y'all allow oral arguments? Absolutely after that it's the discre at the discretion of each judge whether or not they have an issue of what we call issue of first impression maybe some statute or some issue that has not been pre presented to us before that's an opportunity to, for oral arguments, but we like to have them. We have as many as we can a year, most times 10 out of 12 months of the year. Well, that's, y'all meet 10 out of 12 months of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, how many, y'all get a lot more appeals than the Court of Civil Appeals does, don't you? Uh, yes, we do. You know, there's a, there's a statutory limit to the amount of money that the Court of Civil Appeals can hear. Otherwise, it goes straight to, straight to the Supreme oh, Court. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. There is a statute, uh -huh. but we, anything that comes before us, we look at it, we study it, we, it goes before all five judges, we vote on it, and we write on every single case. Now, it you know, may not be a published opinion, but we write in a, some sort of memorandum of opinion, opinion, or an order on every single case that comes before us. Mary, uh, how, how many, um, how many doggone cases do y'all have a year? Well, when I started on the court back in 2009, when I actually took the bench, right. we had over 2,000 cases. That is a heck a of year. a workload. It's a heck of a workload. I don't, at one point in time, we had the fourth lar largest caseload in the nation per judge for our type of court. So we've got, we've got some hard working judges on our court. For example, over there on the Court of Civil Appeals, they wouldn't hear more than 500, would they? You know, I don't know the exact uh, statistic for the Court of Civil Appeals. They do have a lesser uh, caseload, but, but they certainly, I know they work hard and do a great job, too. Now, are they all on the same floor? What floor is y'all's office over there in the Heffern and Talbot building? Okay, C Court of Civil Appeals and C Court of Criminal Appeals are on the second floor. Both of y'all on the same floor? Same floor. Supreme Court's on the third floor? Yes, sir. You know, Tom Park and I were boys stayed together. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, the Chief Justice. Well, we've never not known each other. How about that? He was my campaign manager. I ran for governor of Boy State. How about that? I lost. That? I tell him every time he tells me that. He, I said, Parker, you didn't do a very good job, did you? He's a fine man, too. <laughs> he is. I saw he and Dottie at, at a funeral the other day. Uh, uh, he's a good guy. Parker, yes. let's talk about who all is on the court. Uh, Mary? Now, look, we talked about on the court of criminal appeals. It's Mary Wyndham, you, uh, Chris McCool, uh, Beth Kellum, Minor, and um, who did you say the other one was? Bill, did I say Bill? K Beth Kellum. You're the, the presiding, presiding judge, judge. Though. Yeah, I've been the presiding judge since 2012. And How I, do y'all decide among yourselves? That? I was going to tell you that. Okay. By statute, on our court, the Court of Criminal Appeals, one is elected by their peers. So Y'all's is. That's mm -hmm. right. It's, it's an honor. I was elected in 2012 uh, by my peers, and then when the we had three new judges come on with Bill Cole, Richard Miner and Chris McCool. Uh -huh. And I was honored that they decided that I could retain the uh, position of presiding judge. So that's quite an what honor. What does that, what does that mean? You got, you got more of a workload or you just decide which cases y'all gonna hear or are y'all all right there? Now see, I don't, I don't decide what cases anybody's gonna hear. Our cases are assigned to us kind of through the computer, through an algorithm. Uh -huh. And so, so to be equitable amongst all five judges, so we get all get a variety. Not everybody gets all the death penalties. Not everybody gets all the murders. So, uh, so that's how that's how it, our cases are decided. Who gets what? Now, what I do, part of my job, I do have a few more cases that I look as at presiding judge. as presiding judge, and uh -huh. I'm also handle the administrative affairs. Oh, that's what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's but they don't pay any more for doing it either. Five hundred dollars a year. 
<laughs> for being the design judge. <laughs> yes, and you, sir. And you've got to do all the administrative stuff. That's all right, though. That's Parker just Parker has fine. to do that on the, as the chief judge of the Supreme Court. He does. He, uh -huh. uh, and over the whole administrative office of courts. That's all right. All the lower courts. He's responsibility for the administration of that. Mayor, who oversees the Judicial Inquiry Commission? Uh, that oversees the judges in the state? Is that a separate thing? That's a separate thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Who sets that up? That comes from the governor's office. Doesn't it? I'm not real sure exactly uh -huh. um, the appointments, but I'm sure there are uh -huh. appointments that are, uh, and I think there's certain, like Bill Cole, I believe, is the judge. One uh, judge right. of the in your court. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So they pick one from each of the court. Right, and from different areas of the community and right. whatnot. Now, over there on the civil appeal, I, my friend uh, Bill Thompson is, is presiding judge he over sure there. Is. He's been there a while, too. He certainly has. This is maybe his fourth term that he's it starting. Is. He uh -huh. does a fine job. He sure does. He's a good guy. He's got the nicest children, too. I bet we he does. Sat, we sit together at my football game. Oh, great. Me and Thompson, his, I watch his little they're, boy grow up. They're lovely people. Are they really they are. They are really lovely people. That boy's as handsome as Bill is. <laughs> handsome. <laughs> well, probably in college now. I'm sure they are. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sure they are. Uh, what about, now let's see, Christy Edwards is new on that bench over there. She is. And um, Chad Hanson's new. He is. He's fairly new. They're both doing a fine job. Who are the other two on that thing besides Thompson and the, over there on Civil? Um, we've got, uh, uh, goodness, uh, uh, turn Terry uh, Moore. That's what she's from Terry. Coleman, isn't she? No, Terry Moore is the gentleman from Mobile. That's right, yeah. He's, uh, he he uh, is real learned in a certain area of, of the law, so. Scott Dawson just recently retired. He sure did. He's one of my favorites. He's, he's a good guy. He's, he was, he's out there on my wall. we got to get a picture made when we get through to put you on the wall out there. Oh. Well, that'd be an honor. We'll do it on Facebook is it, too. <laughs> that's great. Uh -huh. that, that that would that would be an honor. But uh, let's talk about who all is on the Supreme. Now, you said a while ago. One question I was going to go back up to: Is it by law that y'all have to have oral arguments on the on the murder on the uh, capital on the death no, penalty? Or is it just something y'all decided to do? That's just something that we make it a policy to do because uh -huh. if you, as you well know, uh, capital murder cases uh, are the most heinous, atrocious, and cruel crimes. You see and, all the inside stuff. Uh, we don't have yes. to look at all the evidence. We have to look. Now, other cases, um, we only look at the issues that are presented for, before us. But on capital murder cases, we have, it's called plain error review. We have to go through every bit of the record on those capital murder cases. Everyone, every bit. Every bit of all it. The Exhibits, evidence. Ev evidence, the testimony, the orders. Doing well, that? and we did it, and we work hard. Now, we, our caseload is down a little bit. Uh, overall, since they've had the new sentencing, um, redone uh -huh. the you know, sentencing protocols. Right, right. And so it's decreased a little bit. But we, we really take a lot of time with those capital murder cases and look at, look at them with a fine-tooth comb, as you will, and we take them, take them very seriously. Mary, uh, Cam Ward was real active in that, uh, in that sentencing thing, and he went over there on the Board of uh, uh, Appeals, I mean the Board of uh, Pardons and Parole. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. but, but now, did th those guidelines, they change, did they change y'all's protocol and rulings a lot? Not a lot. It was recently changed within the last five years. Uh, they re restructured some of the sen sentencing for the lower courts. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's uh, that's made a bit of a difference in the number of cases that we see. But we still have a, a over 1,500 cases, 1,200 to 1,500 cases. So we're a hard-working court. Barry, let me ask you, I, I, I hate to be such a novice about criminal law, but drug cases, uh, they, they're in the state court, aren't they? We have like a drug case. Or, uh, sure. I bet they clog your system up, don't they? Well, that, that we have a lot of that, but that is what some of the sentencing restructuring did. That's what I was getting around yeah, to. Yeah, with, the, with the lesser with the lesser, uh -huh. not not like people that sell drugs or anything like that, but people that were perhaps arrested for personal use or whatever, we see less of those. But y'all wouldn't see appeals on those things anyway, would Well, you? from time to time, sure. Uh -huh. Hey, listen, I've seen an appeal from a municipal court, uh -huh. you know, about, we see DUIs, we see, uh, we've seen traffic violations. I mean, you have the right to appeal. But you ain't got to hear those cases. You well, say we, 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 no, we yeah. sure do. We hear every single. You can't just write and say, this don't have, this don't have standing. Mm -mm. You got to actually hear it. We got to actually look at it and study it, write Is something on it. Is that by law or just y'all's practice? That's what we do. Uh-huh. That's what, that's but our not practice. Like the, Supreme, the Supreme Court will look at a thing and say, this doesn't have standing. 
Y'all yeah, can't they, do they that. Can, they have the right to deny cert. Uh, That's the state, right. The state does. The Supreme Court the, does. The U.S. Supreme Court. The, the, uh -huh. Well, Alabama. It does the too, Alabama uh -huh. Supreme Court does too. That uh -huh. is the right of theirs. So a lot of times the Alabama Court of Criminal Appeals ends up being the court of last resort for capital murder cases. In fact, I had a, a case that came out of my chamber, out of our court, that went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Is that right? It sure did, and I went to the, I was, a, I had the wonderful opportunity to go watch the arguments right there in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. So, uh, yes, we have some very, very serious cases. Now, any criminal case, though, from what I'm gathering, has to go through y'all's net before it gets to the Supreme Court. That's right. We not so of civil, though. Not so of civil. They so. get, there's a certain threshold, what's the dollar threshold? Then go straight to the state. You don't know what that, you know what I think it's 50,000, I think. Oh, okay. Well, so they can just, they can just appeal straight to the Supreme Court? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. But any kind of criminal um, case does not go, there, there are civil cases and other cases that go straight to the Supreme Court, but we review every single criminal case. Mary, you know, I, I've, I've said this for years. I think, I think women are smarter than men, and it's showing up in all the professions now. You know, every school, every college in America, of course, I'm to have two daughters, you know. One of them's a lawyer in Birmingham uh, with Kirk Carl Allison. But uh, you know, 60% of all college graduates and students now are females. The majority, 60% of all law school graduates are females. That makes sense because they're all women are more verbal than men and more better in English. But even in professionals like medicine and, and uh, veterinary medicine, there are more females graduating. So it makes sense that the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals would have, I think it's maybe dominant women. Let's see, on, on y'all's court, it's is you and Beth? Beth, that's it. Just two out of five. That's right. On the civil, Christy Edwards is only female, isn't she? I believe so. Okay. But on the state Supreme Court, you got Kelly Wise. Mm -hmm. Sarah Stewart. Sarah Stewart. Another one, too, isn't there? I don't think so. Okay. But you'll be the third woman on the Supreme Court. We that? need to have another woman on the Supreme Court. <laughs> you know what? We need you on there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I need to have more women on the Supreme Court. I, I, another part of my background is I was an assistant U.S. attorney down in I, Mobile. I did not know that. In the Southern District. I sure was. Who was the U.S. attorney? Um, uh, uh, I've just, uh, David, uh, David York. Who was, pro, who was president of the United States at that time? Oh, it was uh, Reagan. Okay. So you were a U.S. assistant U.S. attorney in how long were you? Not assistant? Reagan. I meant to say not Bush. Bush, Bush, yeah. My goodness, Bush. I thought of a great American. You're not that old. I thought of a great American yeah, when I said Reagan, Reagan, didn't uh -huh. I? No, it was Bush. Do you know back to that female thing? You know back when Steve Wyndham and I were in, le in the legislature, the issue your husband Steve Wyndham, the issue was tort reform. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. You know it was just during the whole eighties we were either pro tort reform or anti tort reform, but it got so bad uh, we had so many judgments in Alabama that. They sent Carl Rove over here, and uh, he orchestrated the the first Republican pro-business sort of races for the Supreme Court, and he he gave the the business council of Alabama was formed for that reason. That's when it was formed it was when we were in the legislature because of tort reform, and the first guy was Clark Richardson. But the Rove to told those of us who were uh, we're doing that stuff. He, he said, let me give you all a, a poll and an indication. He said the best person, a candidate, for the Supreme Court is a female Republican who's had judge experience. Yes. So you fit that bill uh, perfectly. That. He said that's the person who's going to win. A person who is a female jurist who's been either a circuit judge or a court of appeals judge as a Republican is, is the future. The polling shows that. You know, polling shows that if you put a person on a court race in Alabama, you put Jane Doe and John Doe, Jane Doe will beat John Doe. 53-47. Wow. If y'all didn't spend any money. Mm -hmm. wow. So if a man runs against you, he's got an uphill battle. Well, I... Won't outwork you either, will they? No, certainly won't outwork me. And certainly... Um, I don't know of anybody that's running for this race that has the experience that I have they don't. Uh, on an appellate court no. and civil appeal. Uh, You're perfect for it. Per well, thank I you. I have been a U.S. attorney, too. Yes, sir. Been well, assistant U.S. attorney. Assistant U.S. attorney, yeah. assistant U.S. attorney and then a deputy attorney general when we moved to central Alabama. That's right. Hey, Mary, King. how in the world can y'all campaign and have uh, that many appeals? Is it, you, I bet you keep a busy schedule, don't you? I really do. I have to put in extra hours, and I have great staff attorneys. 
but uh, you know what? I make sure I do my job first. Do y'all have a clerk? Uh, y'all each have a clerk over there? We do. The clerk of our court is Scott Mitchell. He does a great job. But y'all don't have like clerks, like law clerks, We do have. We actually have staff attorneys okay. that work for us. Uh -huh. I have three staff attorneys, full-time staff attorneys. Each judge has one? Each Not judge just presiding judge. No, uh, he, he, every uh -huh. single, all of us have staff attorneys. Are they, assistant, US, are they assistant attorney generals? Nope. They're, they're, they're just staff attorneys for the Court of Appeals. They're, that's right. And uh -huh. they, we've got some great ones. I've had one that's been with me almost 11 years, one seven, and another one. I have two females and a male. And uh, the the third one, she's been on she's been on working on the court for several years. Twelve. Y'all get to pick your own ones. We do, we uh -huh. do. They're not on the merit system. You see, they they, they work at y'all. We're not really in the merit system uh -huh. per se. No, we're not. Yeah. We got some good folks though on the court all the all the way through. You sure do. This is we're fortunate to have good people on the court, and it's just a, tell me this, what what's your been your favorite campaign experience? What. Did you have, like have an experience on the campaign trail during all the times you run? This is your third statewide race. Be your fourth one. Well, oh, eight, the third be your third. Yeah, I'm in my third term uh -huh. now, and so running for the uh, Alabama Supreme Court will be my fourth time to run right. statewide. Right. So I've run statewide four times. I'm, I'm telling you, see, that's a, that's a tough question because, you know, the best part of campaigning are the great folks that you meet, right? You, you can't deny that. There are so many great folks, and they're always so good and, and hospitable. In this state of Alabama, it's got some good folks. They sure do. And, Mary, we've got the most beautiful state, too. I know you've seen that having run statewide. I used to go out and visit my papers all over the state once a year. But I tell you what I would schedule. I would schedule that northeast Alabama for the fall. If you've ever seen Jackson and DeKalb County in the fall of the year. Beautiful. Beautiful. The whole, this state, you North know. North Carolina hasn't got anything on this, that area. It's the most beautiful area around Chihau up there. Then you go to where your neck of the woods, our beaches. Are the right. They're lovely. That's one of the things you've enjoyed about campaigning, isn't it? Right. Is exactly. Seeing the, seeing the beautiful state. Mm -hmm. And now we live near Lake Martin, a beautiful lake, right? Oh, yeah. Y'all live on Lake, lake. Martin. They, yes, we sure do. So, well, uh, Mary, our time's up. I hate to tell you, it goes oh, by in a hurry, doesn't it? It sure does. It's such a pleasure talking with you. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Folks, we're very fortunate tonight to have our guest, one of the Court of Criminal Appeals uh, presiding judge, Mary Wendell, the presiding judge of the Court of Criminal Appeals. And she'll be on the ballot this coming year for State Supreme Court, and uh, she'll be able to do a great job on the Supreme Court as she's done on the Court of Civil uh, Criminal Appeals. We thank Mary being with us, and we thank you all for watching. Hope you tune again next week. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Steve, very much so. Thank you, sir.